Okay, what is up there YouTube? Uh, this is J-Man Time and today I have a video on rare World War II tanks and armored cars of the Netherlands. During the Second World War, the Dutch territory of the Netherlands and the Dutch East Indies used a variety of rare or in some cases slightly mass produced tanks and armored cars and other armored fighting vehicles during their war against both Germany and Japan. Starting on May 10th, 1940, Germany invaded the Netherlands, sparking the Netherlands Campaign or the Dutch Campaign of the Second World War. Now eventually the Netherlands fell by May the 17th, 1940, but the Dutch army in the east and the Dutch army off the coast of the US and the Caribbean continued fighting all the way up until the end of World War II. Later on, on December the 8th, 1941, Japan declared war on the Dutch East Indies and annexed the Dutch territories of Java, Borneo, and Sumatra, and the surrounding smaller territories of the Dutch East Indies. And during these battles between the Dutch army and Dutch colonial armies, during their battles against the Axis powers of Germany and Japan, the Dutch had used a variety of tanks and armored cars, most of which aren't that well documented. So let's go over some of the rear tanks and armored cars and other armored fighting vehicles used by the Dutch forces during the Second World War. And the first vehicle on the list is actually the oldest one, and that is the Dutch FT-17, also known as the Dutch FT-17 Schwerlos, which was a light tank manufactured in 1927. Now in 1927, the Dutch had ordered several FT-17 Renault light tanks from France, but only one was delivered, and this one tank was armed with a rechambered Schwerlos machine gun. The Schwerlos M1908, which was a Austro-Hungarian machine gun left over from the First World War. This vehicle was pretty much just an FT-17 fitted with Austro-Hungarian weapons from World War One. Its armor thickness was the same as the average FT-17 at between 6 and 22 millimeters, and it had a speed of 7.5 kilometers or 4.6 miles per hour in a crew of two. This Dutch FT-17 was primarily used as a training tank and parade vehicle in the years before World War II, but when Germany invaded the Netherlands in 1940, this tank was actually put to use during the German invasion, but unfortunately, this vehicle really didn't get far. On its way to the front line, the vehicle actually broke down while trying to cross the flooded regions in the lowland country. During the German invasion of the Netherlands, the Germans actually Actually bombed some of the dams and levees preventing flooding in the territory of the Netherlands and as a result many of the areas in the low country were flooded that includes the area where this one FT-17 was being stored as a result the tank had to traverse this region the flooded region but unfortunately the, the vehicle eventually broke down and had to be abandoned the vehicle was later captured by the Germans and was later pressed into service as an occupation vehicle by the German occupation forces following the defeat of the main Netherlands army during the Battle of the Netherlands in May 1940. And this vehicle pretty much served during the Second World War, mostly in German service, until it was eventually captured during the Allied conquest of the Netherlands later on in 1944 and 1945. Which leads us to the next vehicle on the list, which is actually an armored car under the name the Panzer Wagon GMC. Now the Panzer Wagon GMC was a improvised light armored car or limited production light armored car from 1929 and this vehicle was actually used as a training vehicle originally by the Dutch army both in Europe and in the Dutch territories overseas in the Dutch East Indies. And these vehicles were armed with, with one 37 or 47 millimeter field gun, an older World War I vintage leftover, or in some cases British field gun, with four 7.7 millimeter Lewis M1930 machine guns, 
Its armor thickness was between 6 and 12 millimeters, and its speed was largely unknown, and it had a crew of between 2 and 4. Now only 8 of these vehicles were ever produced, and they were largely used as training vehicles until the Second World War. Before World War II, these vehicles were actually put in storage, but some of the 8 vehicles were actually taken out to be used by the Dutch Army during their battles with the invading German Army in May 1940. What happened to these vehicles after the fall of the Netherlands is largely unknown, but they were probably scrapped by the occupying Germans, as the Germans did scrap many captured vehicles in order to gain the metal needed to produce their own vehicles during the Second World War. So that pretty much ends the history of the first armored fighting vehicle to be produced by the Dutch Army during the years after World War I, and one of the rarest vehicles to be used during the Second World War, or the Patzer Wagon GMC from 1929. The next vehicle on the list is the Wayman Panzer Wagon from 1932, and this was actually a series of light armored police vehicles that were produced in 1932. These vehicles were designed for policing duties in the Netherlands. These vehicles were armed with four 6.5 millimeter Lewis M1920 machine guns or light machine guns. Their armor thickness was also 6 to 12 millimeters. Their speed was unknown, and they had a crew of between four and six. These vehicles were also designed to use small arms like rifles, pistols, and submachine guns, and these vehicles served in the Dutch Army and Dutch military police during the years before and during the Second World War. During World War II, some of these vehicles were pulled out of storage. It is unknown how many of these vehicles were actually produced. Some, some sources state that only two vehicles were produced, while some other sources state that upwards to five or six were produced for the Dutch and military police and the Dutch Army during the years before and during the Second World War. During World War II, they were used to a limited extent during the battles with the German forces, but ultimately they were captured or destroyed by German forces during the invasion of 1940. And that pretty much ends the history of this vehicle as there really isn't much known about these vehicles after 1940. The next series of armored cars to be used by the Dutch during the Second World War was the GMC Patzer Wagon Harlem or Harlem or the Harlem Armored Car Series. And this was another series of limited production armored policing vehicles that were designed in 1934. These vehicles were also armed with either one to four 6.5 millimeter Lewis M20 light machine guns. And they were also, uh, their armor thickness was also between six and 12 millimeters. Their speed was unknown and they had a carrying capacity of between four and six crewmen. Only about two to three of these vehicles were ever produced and their fate during the Second World War is largely unknown. There are photographs of them being used during the German invasion of the Netherlands in 1940. Their fate afterwards or even during the Battle of the Netherlands is largely undocumented. The next series of armored cars is actually a very strange one and this actually comes from the Dutch territory of Coruscant. Now, Coruscant, along with a few other Caribbean islands, are part of the Dutch territories overseas in the Caribbeans, along with the Samoa and a few other islands that are technically still part of the Dutch colonial empire, although the empire is largely dead. And these CPIM armored cars were actually constructed in 1929. In 1929, there was a strange incident between Venezuela and the Dutch territories in the Caribbean Caribbean, which came under attack from several Venezuelan rebel commanders. And during these attacks, the Dutch were forced to build their own improvised armored fighting vehicles. And two of those vehicles were known as the CPIM series of improvised armored cars or improvised armored trucks from 1929. These vehicles' main armament varied between either using small arms like rifles and pistols, with some other sources stating that these vehicles were armed with either 1 to 4 6.5 millimeter Lewis or Madsen machine guns. The armor thickness of these vehicles were pretty light. Only 10 centimeters of steel was available to armor these vehicles, so the armor on these vehicles weren't even good enough to stop rifle cartridges of that time period. 
Their speed was unknown and they also had a crew capacity of between two and six. Now these vehicles were used by Dutch guards on the island of Curaçao and they were used to repel attacks by Venezuelan rebels and mercenaries that had, that had actually invaded the island in 1929. Uh, now after the Venezuelan rebel incident of 1929, these vehicles were actually placed in storage up until the start of World War II. After the fall of the Dutch mainland, or after the fall of the Netherlands, these vehicles were actually recommissioned to be used by Dutch forces operating in the Caribbean and in South America as a whole. And these vehicles were actually later joined by tanks of the Harrington series of armored fighting vehicles produced by the U.S. for Dutch forces still operating both in the East Indies and in South and Central America and the Caribbeans. So these vehicles, these two armored cars actually served a long time. In fact, these vehicles weren't scrapped until the 1950s, according to some of the sources that I've read. And that pretty much ends the history of the CPIM series of armored cars used by Dutch forces on the island of Carrico. The next series of armored cars is the Velton Feynord series of medium armored cars that were constructed between 1929 and 1933. And these were a series of turreted armored cars meant to be used by the Dutch forces in the Dutch East Indies, but ultimately these vehicles were kept at home while some were also sold to other countries like Brazil. And their main armament was three 6.5 millimeter or three 7.92 millimeter Lewis or Madsen M20 light machine guns. Their armor thickness was between three and 10 millimeters and their speed was 70 kilometers per hour or 43.5 miles per hour. And they had a crew of between three and five. Now the Vilton Norton series were actually built as part of a collaboration between the Dutch and the Germans at the time. And Germany actually supplied the Dutch with Krupp automobile chassis and these were later merged with them or redesigned into the Vilton Norton series of armored cars you see now. These vehicles were meant to be used by the Dutch forces and the Dutch East Indies but the Dutch East Indies actually rejected these vehicles and they remained in the Netherlands for many years. That was up until just before World War II where two of these vehicles were actually sold to Brazil. Now in 1940, the Germans invaded the Netherlands and this vehicle was pressed into service with the Dutch army. Eventually the vehicle was captured by the Germans at the end of the battle and was later pressed into service with the German army or the Wehrmacht as it was known during the Second World War. There it actually served on many front lines from the German invasion of Belgium to the German invasion of France. It was also used as an occupation vehicle and it's believed that this vehicle was at least stationed in Normandy at one point. Later on, during the, towards the end of World War II, this Vilton Norton armored car was later used by German forces during the Battle of Berlin in 1945 where it was used to defend the Reichstag building and that is one of the final photographs you see of this vehicle. The two vehicles that were sold to Brazil also served during the Second World War. So these vehicles actually did have a very unique service history both with the Dutch army, the German army, the Brazilian army, and potentially the Japanese army during the fall of the Dutch East Indies. And that pretty much ends the history of these armored cars as their fate after World War II is largely unknown, but they are most likely scrapped as they would have been useless by the 1940s, the late 40s and early 50s. The next series of armored cars on the list is actually my favorite of the Dutch armored cars to be used during World War II and that is the DAF M1939 and this was a series of medium turreted armored cars that were constructed between 1938 and 1940. These armored cars were actually based off a Dutch off a Dutch artillery truck or slash utility truck that was later redesigned into a heavily armored lightly armored turreted armored car. And the main armament of these vehicles were one 37 millimeter Model 1939 Bofors anti-tank gun. And they were also armed with three 7.65 millimeter Dutch Lewis or Madsen light machine guns. Their speed was 75 kilometers per hour or 47 miles per hour. And they had a crew of five. 
Only 13 of these vehicles were produced, plus at least one or two prototypes, and they were some of the rare armored fighting vehicles to be used in the Dutch Army. But in terms of firepower, they were some of the better vehicles. Keep in mind, the Dutch also had some British Carden Lloyd light tanks and a bunch of other British and Swedish armored vehicles in their service, but these were only armed with machine guns. And the DAF M1939 was one of the few tanks or tank or armored cars in the Dutch mainland army to be armed with a decent enough anti-tank gun, as the 37mm Bofors gun could penetrate upwards to 40 millimeters of armor, which was more than what most German tanks and armored cars were using, with the exception of the Panzer 3 and 4 series. So these armored cars were actually pretty useful, and these armored cars were some of the few Dutch vehicles to score kills against German armored fighting vehicles during the invasion of the Netherlands in May 1940. Now after the fall of the Netherlands, many of these vehicles were actually pressed into service with the German army during the rest of World War II. They were used during the German invasion of Belgium and the German invasion of France also in 1940, and they were also used in the German invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, during the um, invasion of Ukraine and the Soviet-occupied Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. And these vehicles continued to serve with the German army all the way up until the final battle of Berlin, where at least one of these vehicles was still operating with the German army during that particular battle. So these vehicles actually saw a pretty extensive history with both the Dutch and German forces during the Second World War. The next series of vehicles on the list actually comes from the Army of the Dutch East Indies, also known as the KNIL. And the first vehicle on the list is the Brat Over Volkswagen from 1940. And this was actually a series of wheeled armored personnel carriers that were designed to be used in the Dutch East Indies following the defeat of the Dutch army in mainland Europe. These vehicles had a main armament of either, either four 7.7 millimeter Vickers machine guns or one 12.7 millimeter Browning machine gun. Their armor thickness was between six and 20 millimeters and their speed was 90 kilometers per hour or 60 miles per hour. And they had a crew capacity of between 12 and 14. Only 25 of these vehicles were produced for the Dutch for Dutch troops operating in the East Indies and they were dispersed amongst the many Dutch battalions fighting against the Japanese forces during the Japanese invasion of the Dutch East Indies starting in December 1941. Overall, these vehicles were pretty advanced looking. They actually looked like some of those South African or Rhodesian armored cars that were later seen during the Bush Wars of the Cold War era. Now, these vehicles served in the Dutch army until they were eventually captured or destroyed by Japanese forces. And several, several of these wheeled armored personnel carriers actually served in the Imperial Japanese Army during the Second World War. And there was also a rare anti-aircraft version. And this was fitted with the old-fashioned version of the M2 Browning machine gun with the heavy water jacket. And this was used by both the Dutch, Dutch East Indies forces and some of these were captured by Japanese forces and pressed into service with the Imperial Japanese Army operating in the occupied Dutch East Indies territories of Borneo, Java, and Sumatra. These were also encountered by American, British, and Australian forces during the recapturing of those territories from the Japanese later on in 1944 and 1945. So these vehicles actually had a pretty extensive history also during the Second World War and both the Dutch and later Japanese forces. There was also a second version of the Bratz Overvolwagen armored personnel carriers produced for the Dutch Army, and these were known as the Brat Stanswatch Overvolwagen Series 2 armored cars also designed in 1940. And these were armored personnel carriers that, that kind of looked like German half-tracks almost. But these were armored personnel carriers or simple 
armored personnel carriers, sometimes called the self-defense armored personnel carriers. They were also designed and constructed in 1940. Their main armament was one 7.7 millimeter Vickers machine gun or one 37 millimeter anti-tank gun. And they were also fitted with some anti-aircraft auto cannons in some rare cases. Now the armor thickness of these vehicles was 12 to 20 millimeters. They had a speed of 40 kilometers per hour or 24.8 or miles per hour and a carrying capacity of between 16 and 18 troops. About 90 of these were actually produced for the Dutch Army in the Dutch East Indies or the KNIL and these vehicles served during the Japanese invasion of the Dutch East Indies in 1941-1942 and some of these vehicles were also captured by Imperial Japanese troops and were pressed into service with the occupying Japanese forces in the regions of Borneo, Java and Sumatra and the surrounding territories of the, the Dutch East Indies. Now these vehicles were a simplified version of the previous vehicles. They don't look as advanced as the previous version and these vehicles actually remind me of the German half tracks being used during the Second World War or the Sonderkraftswagen as they were called in German. Except these vehicles have wheels instead of tracks and these vehicles were pretty useful and there were 90 of these produced making them some of the most mass produced Dutch armored fighting vehicles of the Second World War. Now. During World War II, the Dutch also purchased tanks or had specialty made tanks produced by the United States for the Dutch armies both in Europe and the Dutch East Indies and the Dutch army operating in the Caribbean and at Dutch territories within the Caribbean in North and Central America. And so let's go over some of those rare tanks that were produced in the U.S on order for the Dutch armies outside of Europe during the Second World War. And the first tank on the list is the Marmon Harrington CTLS A tank series of light tanks that were designed in 1939. Now in 1939, the US actually produced these tanks for China. Now these vehicles were originally designed for export to China. In 1937, the US had lost one of its gunboats to a Japanese bombing attack in the Yangtze River. This was known as the USS Panay incident. As a result, the US began manufacturing weapons for the Chinese nationalists to help them defend themselves against the invading Japanese. And as a result, the Marmon Harrington Company actually began manufacturing light tanks to be exported to China and the CTLS-4 TAC model was actually manufactured for the Chinese army. Over 450 of these were produced for China. Their main armament was one 50 caliber machine gun and one 30 caliber Browning model 1919 medium machine gun. Their armor thickness was between 12 and 25 millimeters and they had a speed of 48 kilometers per hour or 30 miles per hour and a crew of two. Now over 450 of these were produced, but 200 of these vehicles remained and the remaining vehicles were actually given to the Dutch army, both in the Dutch East Indies and the Dutch armies operating in the Caribbean and in Central and Latin America. And these vehicles actually served in the Dutch Army for the remainder of World War II. Now, these vehicles were actually kind of useless as most of the Japanese tanks that were used during the actual invasion of the Dutch East Indies were the Type 95, the Type 89, and later on the Type 97, which were also which were all armed with anti-tank guns that were capable of punching through the thin armor of these tanks. So some of these tanks were actually captured by the Japanese. Many of these tanks were actually retained by the U.S. Army and were used during the Aleutian Island campaign later on in 1943. Now, these vehicles actually served up until the end of World War II and were one of the rarer tanks to be used by the Dutch Army, or at least the Dutch Colonial Army in this case. 
The Marmon Harrington Company also designed another version of this tank known as the Marmon Harrington CTMS 1TB1 series of light tanks. And this was actually an upgrade to the previous version of this vehicle, armed now with a 37mm L44 auto cannon and four 30 caliber Browning M1919 light medium machine guns. The armor thickness was now 13 millimeters overall and the speed was 40 kilometers per hour or 25 miles per hour and it still had a crew of between two and three. 194 of the second variation of the Marmon Harrington light tank were produced for the Dutch army in the Dutch East Indies starting in early 1941. Some of these vehicles were delivered but not enough of these vehicles actually made it. Ultimately, most of the vehicles remained in the Dutch army operating in the Caribbean and in Latin and Central America, where they remained in service for the duration of World War II making it one of the rarer light tanks to be used by the Allied powers and the Dutch army as a whole during the Second World War. There was a final version of this light tank, an enlarged version or more powerful version known as the Marmon Harrington MTLS 1G1 or 1G14 and this was a medium tank designed around the same time in 1941. This vehicle was armed with a twin 37 millimeter or dual purpose or dual dual purpose 37 millimeter L44 auto cannon designed for both for use against both tanks and aircraft as an anti-aircraft weapon and it was also armed with four Browning 30 caliber M1919 medium machine guns and the same and the armor thickness was increased from 13 millimeters to 38 millimeters giving it the armor thickness of some of the early Sherman tanks and some of the heavier light tanks being used in the US Army at the time but now for the Dutch Army. The speed was, was still 40 kilometers per hour or 25 miles per hour and the crew capacity was increased to 4. Some 200 of these Marmon Harrington MTLS uh, 1G14 tanks, medium tanks were produced for the Dutch Army and, Dutch East, and the Dutch East Indies. But unfortunately, these tanks came too late. By the time the tanks were completed, the Japanese had already invaded and had annexed almost all of the Dutch East Indies by the time these tanks were put on American ships to be sent to the Dutch East Indies. So these tanks too were mostly used by the Dutch army operating in the Caribbean and other Dutch territories in Latin and Central America. So these were all of the tanks used by the Dutch army during the Second World War, both during the German invasion of of the Netherlands in 1940 and joined the Japanese invasion of the Dutch territories in the East Indies in 1941-1942. Which of these tanks were your favorite? If you ask me, I like the CTMS-1, the TB-1, and my favorite of the armored cars was the DAF M1939. And my favorite armored personnel carrier is the one with the hardest to pronounce name, the Brat over a Volkswagen from 1940. So which of these were your favorite? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off.